1978 Mercedes-Benz 300 CD. A diesel Mercedes. W123 aspirated naturally. A 70s heart at an end. Kiss your wife, call your friends. I can tell that this is gonna be Benz. I can tell that this is gonna be Benz. If you want to sound cool, you'll call this car the W123. This is when Mercedes was a Mercedes, and they named their chassis code after Sesame Street sponsors. The 300CD is the coupe version of the 300D, and the 300D is the one everybody wants. And the version of that that everybody wants is the 300 turbo diesel wagon. So this is as far as the most desirable version of the D that you can want, because this is the coupe. That's what CD stands for, the, the coupe diesel. But there's no turbo in this. It's just an inline five-cylinder diesel with no turbo, so that means it's very slow. The engine is a three-liter, five-cylinder designated OM617, naturally aspirated, 79 horsepower at 4,000 RPM, and 125 pound-feet of torque at 2,400 RPM. Does it get out of its own way? Sure. Does it get up to speed very fast? No. Is it comfortable? Very. Is it well built? You have no idea. To put this in perspective, when the 300 CD, when this particular 300 CD was new in 1978, it retailed for about $25,000. Adjusted for inflation to 2016, that is $90,000. This is the equivalent of a $90,000 car today. And today, EJ, who owns this W123, got it for 500 bucks. So what does it feel like to drive? Like a suit of lead. It feels like I'm driving Chernobyl sarcophagus. But it feels just like a Mercedes today. Even the light switch on the left side of the steering wheel looks just like the light switch on a modern Mercedes today. So what did a $25,000 car get you in 1978? It got you air conditioning and it got you mechanical climate control. Mm -hmm. 1978, when most cars didn't come with air conditioning, and some big American cars did, I mean, it certainly wasn't a standard option. Air conditioning back then was an expensive option. Air conditioning was something you bragged about. This thing went one step farther. It had climate control. But how? It didn't really have a computer. It had gears. And this is the module in the back of the trunk. I, no, 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 I, no. It has vacuum lines. It has lots of litter, little gears. And what does it do? It breaks. Mercedes last a long time, especially ones of this era, but just like Mercedes today, when they break, oh, they break catastrophically. So who bought this car new? Easy. The same people who dad click. I didn't even touch it, now it's doing something. No, you dad clicked. I didn't even touch it! This is a computer I understand! Let me teach you how to do taxes! This is the way to do it right! Accountants just rip you off! In 1977, when you're previous to this car, non-turbo W123s were slower than Michael Myers' victim. So Mercedes rushed out the turbocharged five-cylinder diesel in 1978 because greed and patience make lousy roommates. Of course, any Benz is a status maker. They're more popular than those accelerated cooking videos everybody is posting on Facebook, and as recognizable to the public eye as Detective Munch. Just saying you have one allows you to cut through the jet stream of BS you hear around the water cooler at work. You know, where the humble brag is king and his jurisdiction is wherever his dick leads him. This is before the 90s slump of Mercedes-Benz. When you owned a Mercedes in the late 70s, you didn't even have to say what kind. Oh, there he is. He's got a Mercedes. Oh. Because this is the era of the Chevrolet Chevette. This car and that car existed side by side. When you get into this, it feels normal. It's a little bit dirty on the inside. It has these seat covers in it. Of course, he just got it for $500. You get a $500 Chevette, you get a $500 Benz, Ah, so this dominated anything else. Remember, this is late 70s. This is when catalytic converter technology was terrible and was choking performance. The Mercedes-Benz 300 CD likes to go 50 miles an hour. It just gets at that speed and stays. Our volunteers for today came out from Pittsburgh, but they didn't take the turnpike. They took back roads. Car liked it. You can put this thing on the highway. Eh, it doesn't. It 70 miles an hour. No, 
No. The person who drove this Mercedes in the 70s had enough money not to be in a hurry. It was a car for high rollers and family circus readers in the 1970s. But today, a Mercedes 300D, oh, that's a car for a 19-year-old with a fistful of condoms and an almost stash. He's on the prowl, looking to get himself into a 70s porno situation. But his hopes dwindle like the world's saddest New Year's countdown. Four some, three some, two some, lone some. Back to the engine. This inline five-cylinder diesel sounds like gravel falling out of a wheelbarrow. Just the sound a diesel makes sends you running toward the nearest bus stop, seized with white rabbit-like panic, imagining that you're running late for the school bus. A W123 sounds nice in theory. And it says Mercedes out in front, but today it's decidedly average. You can boast all day about having a diesel-powered Mercedes-Benz, but at some point, this carriage is still going to turn back into a pumpkin, because you will never stop repairing it. I get, I get it, that's the point. And there's a great fan base around the 300 series and the W123. They're never going to completely fall out of style because, again, this was when Mercedes was Mercedes. This is a block of German steel. And they're revered for the same reason American iron in the 50s is revered. If you know what you're doing, it will last forever. But look at it. It's nice. Just nice. It can roll up anywhere. It's the niceness of an uncle who's not particularly great, but, you know... There's worse people than him, so, mm. and he's good for $25 every Christmas. Talking about Mercedes-Benz these days, it's hard to get around the sword of Damocles hanging with money above your head. You can be disappointed by one, and you can be disappointed by the repairs, but manage your expectations. You'll be less likely to find yourself overcome with regret, like when you pour your heart out over your ex one night and never get a response. But then you see it there in the corner of the message window, seen at 11.06 p.m. I salute you, W123 owners. You're doing the gods' work. And I hope someday that Mercedes-Benz can get back to simplistic, laudable engineering. Drive this car somewhere else. Let's take a road trip by ourselves. We'll avoid the highway and we'll split the cost of diesel gas. We won't have to worry ever again. I can tell that we are gonna drive Benz. I can tell that we are gonna drive